dance with you, but uh, forgive me, and uh, we'll do it next time. Amen. She saw it beautifully. Amen. I don't know, is this on? Can you hear me? No, it's not on. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I thank God for uh, uh, for the shepherds of this house. Amen. Pastor Mike and Pastor Rachel. Come on, let's give a great Amen. big hand for them. house, amen, uh, to Pastor uh, Dave and to uh, Pastor uh, Bob that asked me to uh, stand in for him tonight as he's uh, in, the, in the heavens, head towards, uh, is it God? God. Yeah, God, amen. So, so uh, it is an honor just to, uh, to be here, amen, and to just to continue with what has been going on here. Uh, when did it start? Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Amen. Uh, to my wife. Amen. Just want to honor her as well. Amen. My wife Bernie. Amen. <laughs> 36 years. Praise God. Amen.
may you baptize me now. Lord, repeat with me. The baptism of rivers of living waters. God, that I will become so immersed in you and submerged, Lord God, in you this night. God, that I become absolute, that I become no longer seen because of the rivers of living waters covering me. God, that there will be no need for, for me to be seen or to be discovered, but that you, God, will shine in us and through us. And so, Father, we honor you, Lord God, for this night. God, may the hand of the Lord God be upon us. God is sweet. Lord God, in your spirit. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Blessings again. Amen. Um, tonight. Something has what became dead out of, you know, 
out of life, no, no more connected. Amen. And so, uh, so whenever there is no revival, and we don't see in scripture that the priests have left their posts. Amen. The teaching priests. Amen. And we want to, uh, by scripture, to be able to uh, teach us all tonight that 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 every believer born again is a teaching priest or should be a teaching priest. So you should know that you are called to be a teaching priest. Okay, and we're going we're gonna to look at that by scripture. Amen. And so and so that's why we want to uh, read the scripture out of your own Bible so you won't say, well, uh, the preacher preaching it from another. So, But if you can see it out of your own Bible, you know, you can say, okay, okay, I, uh, there's some truth to what he's saying, okay? All right, so let's look at uh, our, our base scripture is going uh, to come from Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 3. And let's begin at verse 1. And it says this, And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa, and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. So uh, the Spirit, so whenever, you know, and, and we've been teaching on the book of Acts, and we're in the uh, second, still in the second chapter, just the beginning of the year. Amen. And just doing some next, uh, I guess you would call it expository uh, teaching, preaching, and just allow God to break open some things. Because uh, one of the things that we're beginning to understand that whenever the Spirit of God comes, whenever the Spirit of God moves upon a person or upon a body, the Spirit always come <coughs> from God upon us to do service. Okay? It's never, the Spirit of God is never intended for our own self promotion or selfishness. When the Spirit of God comes, it comes for a particular reason, a particular purpose from God. <coughs> amen. And so we see here that when the Spirit of God came, amen, it began to move upon the, uh, the son, uh, uh, it began to move upon Azariah, the son of Odeh. And we notice here that he began to declare that the Lord is with you while ye are what? With him. Okay? Amen. So, God is not going to be with you and I if we're not with him. Amen? Now, a lot of, a lot of TV preachers are not declaring that uh, this day, you know? But we've got to go back to the scriptures, go back to what the Word of God said. Amen? Uh, Old Testament, New Testament, if, if, if you are not walking with God, God is not with you. Okay? And he says that the Lord's with you while you be with him, and if you seek him, he will be what? Found of you. Amen. But if you forsake him, God will also what? Forsake you, for, for, forsake you as well. And me for, as well. Now it says, now for a long season Israel had been without what? The true God. And without what? A teaching priest. And without what? Law. But when... But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and saw him, he was found of them. Okay, so, so the Bible begins to declare that there was a season that Israel, or the nation of Israel, had been without what? Without the true God. And without a teaching priest. And without law. Okay, so when we begin to look at those words and begin to Look at the definition for the, uh, the Hebrew of, of those words. It began, it, it gives this idea. When it talks about a season, it talks about a process of time. Okay, say, with, say that with me, process of time. Process of time. Okay, so for a long season or a process of time, Israel had been without. Now the word without means in absence of. Without means in absence of. Okay, the true God, which declares that uh, that God will rule as God and God prevails. Um, 
And, and it says, and without or in absence of a teaching priest. Okay? Now, uh, the teaching priest, the word teaching means to flow as water. Okay? It means to flow as water to point out, uh, to, to instruct, to teach. Okay? And the priest, the definition of a priest, it means to officiate as a priest, meaning to mediate in religious services. Okay, so so as we begin to just look at those definitions that I just declared, it would read something like this. Now for a process of time, Israel had been in absence of the true God, in absence of a teaching priest, in absence of law. Okay? So, so, as, so if that happens to Israel, the nation of Israel, and it, and, and it declares throughout the Bible that when a nation or when a people begin to move away from God or begin to forsake God, then we as a people or as, or as individual become what? There's an absence of what? The true God. Okay? And it's a clue that the Bible, well, let's uh, uh, go over to John chapter 17, verse 3. I just wanted to see something here as well. Somebody, uh, can you come and read for me? Who else can read for me? I just need a uh, male female. You can't see. <laughs> okay. Uh, John, okay, John chapter 17, verse 3. They give us an idea what I mean by true God. The scripture says, what, John chapter 17, verse 3? And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Okay, so, so, so this is, so John says, now this is eternal life. What is eternal life? That men might know him, that men might know God, the only God, the only true God, and... Who else? Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So it's not enough just to know God because see, every, most people can play a saint by saying, I serve God or I know God. But the dynamic change when you place in what? Jesus Christ. Okay? Amen? So when you, so when you begin to read in the book of Acts or when you begin to look at the early church, as long as they uh, spoke about God, there was no persecution. But when they began to speak about Jesus Christ and his resurrection, then there was what? Much persecution. Amen? So, 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 this, so this is the reason why I said in John chapter 17, verse 3, that I just want to give an idea, is that, is that the Bible declares that without or in absence of a true God or the true God, so whenever we're in the absence of a true God, that means that we're going to be worshiping what? A false God. Okay? We're going to be led by false what? Gods. Idolatry. Amen? So whenever, so it doesn't matter if you're in a church, it doesn't matter what kind of position, amen, that you may be in. And whenever you and I leave God, leave the true God, we're open ourselves to what? False gods. Idolatry. Amen? And, and God will forsake us, okay? So, so, uh, so I just want to, to, to go there to John chapter 17, verse 3, to give us an idea of what I mean by the true God, okay? So, so the Bible declares that it was a process of time, okay? So oftentimes, we, oftentimes, a person just don't stumble into sin or stumble in leaping away, uh, 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 walking away from God, it, 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 it becomes a what? A process. A process of time, okay? It was a process of time, amen, for us to come out of sin into what? Righteousness. Amen? And, and, and walking with God. Amen? So, but it's a danger, amen, that we're doing that process that we're not seeking God. Okay? So, 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 uh, let's look at some other scriptures. Um, so let's go to John chapter 8, verse 31, and then Colossians 1.23. Okay, and let me let me declare this, 
they like to suggest to you that in the absence of a teaching priest, in the absence of a teaching disciple, humanity, nations, or in absence of a true God, in absence of law, in absence of instruction, okay, in absence, amen, of guidance, then that nation or the culture, amen, becomes uh, a society of danger. It becomes a society of immorality, violence, amen. It becomes, it, it becomes godliness. It be, it, the, the land is filled with injustice, amen, and wickedness is, is imminent whenever a nation or whenever a people, amen, begins to walk away or walk away from the true God, okay? Everything else becomes so important than the true God, okay? Than the true God, amen, and his and his direction and his law. Okay, so so so, so let's ver let's verify that by reading John eight verse thirty one, and it says that Jesus said that those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Okay, amen. So 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 is important, amen, as teaching priests or as teaching disciples, believers, amen, is not enough. To hang your hat on where you began. Okay? How faithful you were. Okay? How faithful you were in Scripture, this and that. You know, none of that means anything if you don't continue. Right? Okay, so we got some all back over. So so what so what Jesus was declaring that when he was preaching, amen, in, in, the, uh, in the multitude. Amen. And as some Jews began to believe on his message, then he said to those believing Jews, this, what was the message? That if, if you continue, if you continue, then you truly are what my disciples indeed. Okay? So, so, so it's important, amen, that as, that as believers, and, 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 and we keep on the subject of teaching priests, Amen. That we must continue. Amen. 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 Doesn't I mean? Doesn't matter what's going on in our world. Amen. It doesn't matter. Amen. Even you know, it may be a brother, a sister, or somebody. Amen. That have walked away from God. Amen. You must continue. Amen. You, as a teaching priest, a teaching disciple, you must continue. Amen. Because what we have today, amen, in the body of Christ, amen, we got too many people in and out too often. Amen. They're stumbling in and they're stumbling out. Amen. You don't know if you're saved today. You, know, you don't know if you're saved tomorrow. Amen. You know, we're, we're, we're three steps forward and 20 steps backwards. That should not be. Amen. That should not be among teaching priests. Among true disciples. Amen. Amen. So we must continue in word. We must continue in deed. We must continue. Amen. In him. And there's a reason for that as we continue. Amen. Let's look at Colossians 1.23. And it says. If you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard. And which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I call and made a minister. Okay, so Paul is declaring that if you what? Continue. continue. Okay, John says what? If you what? Continue. Paul is declaring the same message that what? That if you continue, amen, based upon what? Where you started your faith. Continue. Abiding. Okay? As a what? Teaching priest. Now, why, why, is, why is it so important that you and I be faithful, that we continue? Because God desires to save men. Amen. He desires to save nations. Amen. He desires to save souls. Amen. Amen. And so he's going to reach souls and he's going to reach nations by your lifestyle, your behavior, my behavior. As a priest, as a teaching priest, as an officiating priest. Amen. To what? To the nation. Amen. 
Okay? Um, so let's look at some scriptures. Because a heathen nation that do not know God, how can they know him? How can they begin to know the true God? How can they begin to know him? Well, Romans talks about that without a preacher, right? It talks about the preacher, amen? Unless that preacher is sent, so forth and so on. Okay, but as, as we keep this up, as we keep this theme of resurrecting or restoring the teaching priest, is that God is going to use you and I to test the nations. Okay? Why? Because they don't know who the true God is. And what better person to introduce them to the true God is you and I. Amen. Right? Amen. They don't know. They're in darkness. Amen. Amen? But you are in the light. Right? You're walking as a priest. Amen? You're walking. Amen? You're flooded with, with, with God. And, now, whatever I say law, amen, it's not just do's and don'ts as much as it is just walking with instruction. Being instructed by the Holy Ghost. Okay? Amen? And so, and, and so what better way can a person know who the true God is, is you exemplifying what a true priest looks like. Okay? So, let's look at some scriptures that would uh, verify what I just, what we're talking about here. So, let's go to Acts chapter 6, verse 7. Uh, then let's go, then someone get Romans. Uh, let's go and get Romans chapter 15, verse 16. Let's go to Acts chapter 6, verse 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem great, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Okay, so as the word of God increased, and the number of what? Priests. Disciples also what? Multiplied. Multiplied. Okay, in Jerusalem greatly. And then what else happened? A great company of the priests were what? Obedient to the faith. Okay, so, so, so as the disciples increase, right, as the word increased, the disciples multiplied, right, okay, in Jerusalem, and then there was a great company of priests became what? Obedient to the faith. Based upon what? The word of God. Amen. They continued, right? They continued, and this was the process or the effects of one continuing in the word that men began to what? Become obedient. And specifically the priests. Okay? Let's look at Rome. So let's go to Romans chapter 15. I mean Romans chapter 1. No, Romans chapter Romans 15, 16. Okay? That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, preaching uh -huh. the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Okay. Amen. So it talks about what? That that Paul being what? A minister <laughs> or priest to what? To whom? The Gentiles. Is that what it says? Okay. Ministering the gospel of God that, that the offering of the Gentiles might be what? Acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Okay? So let's look at another scripture uh, in 1 Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 5. And, and, and then the second chapter of 1 Peter, verse 9. 1 Peter 2, 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Okay, so, so Peter is declaring that you and I are also what? Lively stones built up a, built up a what? A spiritual house, right? A holy priesthood. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you, you are a holy priesthood. Okay? You are a lively stone. You are built up 
in a spiritual house. To offer what? Spiritual what? Sacrifices that are acceptable to God by what? His son, Jesus Christ. Okay? So, so, so what am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to give us scriptures and that we can read and, and see who we are and what we are to be in the earth, okay? All right? So let's look at uh, verse 9. But you are a chosen <coughs> generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay, so, so, so Peter just says that what? You are lively, right? You are built up into what? A spiritual house? Amen? Not your own house. Not what you are. But it's according to God's plan. Right? His plan. His purpose. Amen? And he says that, it, and it says also in verse 9, that you are what? Chosen. Okay? Hallelujah. Amen? That should be so exciting. Amen? That we have been what? Chosen. Amen. For the Bible said that we did not what choose God, but God chose us. So, so, so many, many times in my prayer, I'm, I always say, God, I thank you for choosing me to be on your team, choosing me, making choice of me Amen. to be a priest, making choice of me to worship you, to come into your presence. Amen. Amen. And so, and so, verse nine says that you are chosen. Amen. So we are a chosen. Generation, right? And you are a what kind of priesthood? Not only a holy, but you are a royal priesthood. Amen? Amen? You know, I don't want you to raise your hand, but, you know, just just, just think about this. How, I mean, how often, I mean, do we really see ourselves as royal, holy? Because it's one thing to hear it, and it's another thing to believe in it. To believe that I am royal. Amen? And not getting off into this all this other cocky kind of theology. Amen. That is not about me and you. It's about, it's about you and I uh, 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 reflecting the great priesthood. Amen. It's not about us. It's not about our royalty. It's not about trying to get our royalty. It's not trying to name our our royalty. Amen? It's not about none of that goofy stuff that we hear today. It's not about us. It never has been about us. But it's being preached about us. Right? Have your best life now. Right? You know? Get your thing now. You know? Every day should be what? Fine. I mean, so as everything is have, have shifted from God, the priest, to a worldly kind of thing. Amen? But God is trying to get us what? What was the definition? He's trying to what? Restructure us. Restore. Right? Bring back the original intent of priesthood. The original intent of, of walking in the royal priesthood and walking as a lively stone. So that means that, you, that, that means that you and I should not be what a dead stone, but a lively stone. Amen? A worshiper. Amen? Hallelujah. Learning to worship, learning you know, to break through those, uh, those, those barriers or, or those limitations that would say to us that we cannot, but we can. Why? Because, because we are representatives of the great priesthood. Amen? Hallelujah. And so that he says that you are a holy nation. So 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 how is God going to reach even people or unsaved people? He's not going to reach unsaved people with unsaved people. But we hear both of that in the church today. Well, how can we win the, the how can we win the young people? How can we do this? How can we do that? Well, let's go and see what the world does, and, and then we use their tactics to break them in. No, no, no. The Bible doesn't say that. It's easier to do that. Why? Because we don't want to spend time in the presence of God and say, okay, God, I'm going to wait and hear what the priest is declaring. 
how to reach. Amen. Amen. How to touch lives. Amen. And so God says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise up a holy nation. I'm going to raise up some peculiar people. They don't look like the world. They don't talk like the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. They're not inundated by the world. Amen? They're not. Amen? They're, the world cannot buy them. Amen. amen? You know, I desire to come to that place. Amen. And God, amen, that Paul says, and I, this is such a mystery, Pastor. Amen. When Paul declares that, that the world is crucified to him and I'm crucified to the world. My God, that's holy priesthood. That's holy priesthood. Amen. That, the, that, that this world and all that, that is in the world, amen, you become crucified to it. You're not tied to it. None of those things can be tied to you. Why? Because you recognize that we are to be a peculiar people. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. We're not trying to fight to fit in. We're not supposed to fit in. So stop trying to fit in. Just be a royal priesthood. A holy priesthood. A peculiar priesthood. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Stop trying to, amen, fit. You ain't supposed to fit. You're supposed to stand out as a what? A holy nation. That's how God's going to, that's how God is going to get a hold of people. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. And when we do it his way, and really, you know, when you, you know, I'm finding, I'm finding out, especially, it's one thing to sit in the pew and listen to the preaching and then become a pastor yourself. It's a whole different, it's a whole different story. My God. So I'm learning, amen, that I can really relieve myself of a whole lot of stress is just trying to do it God's way, the way he said it. Amen? And if you don't like it, you got to deal with God. Because that's the way it were in those days. You know, you didn't see anybody walking up to Moses. Well, in a few instances, but they got struck with leprosy and they died. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, there was, there was no talk back to the priests in those days. Because they revered. Because there were mouthpieces for God. Amen. So if this is where God says go, then this is where we're going to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When God told the priest, amen, to build him, him a sanctuary and he wants these kind of colors, amen, Moses didn't go down and, 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 and get a, a team that's okay. Well, God says it should be this color, but what, but what do you think? Right? Or someone would say, you know what? You know what? I, 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 I don't think that the thread should be that color, but, but this one. Jehovah said that the thread of the color should be. That's where it should be. And there was no fuss about it. Right? They just obeyed. But when we get out of obedience, because we want to please the multitude, then guess what? God's going to forsake us. Amen. Why? Because we refuse to listen to simple what? Obedience. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So, um, so in verse nine, so it says that 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 you that God said, "I'm going to use you as a peculiar people, for you for you shall show forth what the praises of Him." Again, it's not about you and I. My God, we need to just shake ourselves from that. Amen. It's about showing praises. So forth the praises of what? Of Him. Of God. Amen? Not about us. It's not about us. And we don't see that further in Scripture as well. Amen? Because we just need to be shaken from that. Why? Because it is and it always has been about Him. The so forth the praises of Him who hath what? Called you 
and I out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. So that's going to be our testimony. Amen. To the nations, how God called you and I out of what? Darkness into his marvelous light. So we're going to show forth. We're going to demonstrate. And we're going to walk. We're going to behave. We're going to model. Rise up. Rise up. Yeah, we're going to model that what? That holiness of a nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to show forth those kinds of praises. And guess what? All of those praises, all of the praises that's within us, what God has brought us out of, all that reflects back to whom? The Father. Amen. It reflects back to the Godhead. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. It's not about. And so, and so we don't want to get into that satanic thing, amen, that, you know, and, you know, that was Satan decided, amen, why should all the praise go to him? Amen? Amen? But guess what? He convinced, what, a third of the angels and said, come on, I think we can overthrow God. Come on, I think we can do it our own way. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, so if it happened in heaven, in heaven, around the throne of God, how in the world you and I are going to think that we're going to, amen, be without an excuse and that when we walk indifferent to the scripture, indifferent to the word of God. Amen. So we got to be very careful, amen, that everything that we do, it should be for what? Not the glory of ourselves. You know, not to get our name in lights. Amen. Not to put something and, and you know, on Facebook, and we desire to get all these, what, 500 likes. And it has nothing to do with Christ. It has nothing to do with God. And it has nothing to do with anything. But we just want to be liked by the world. What's with the people? Amen? So God is saying, amen, that he wants and he desires, amen, that, that, that this priesthood needs to be, what, restored. And bring back vibrancy and strength and power, amen, and order and honor to the office, amen? Yes. Hallelujah, amen? Somebody said, I think, it was in, I think it was even in the song, you know, one of the things that we always, one of the things that I'm praying to and I'm trying to share with people too, see, Christ not only came to take away our sin, but he also came to destroy the power of sin working in our life. What, is, what good is it to take away that I'm still dealing with sin and bound by sin? Amen? So Christ has come to not only to, this, to take away our sin, but to destroy the power and the dominion of sin in our life so that we can show forth the praises of God who brought me out of sin that used to dominate me. But when I got a hold of the word, amen, in Romans, when it says that sin should no longer have dominion in your life, Lorenzo, and when I got a hold of that word, amen, hallelujah, amen, liberty, amen, came into my life. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. amen. So, he wants, to, he wants to take that, that testimony, that priesthood, that restoration of priests and begin to declare it among the heathens, among those that do not know Christ, among those that are struggling, amen, that cannot believe that you can live without sin. You don't have to, you don't have to obey sin. You don't, you don't know, you no longer have to allow sin to have dominion in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, and so, and so, what incentive, amen, for a sinner to come to Christ, amen, when they see you and I, amen, always what? Stumbling. That's a snare. It's, it becomes a snare. So Christ says, so, so it, 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 we got to come to the place. Either the word of God is true or it's not. It's true. 
Amen? It, it, I mean, if he says, amen, I call you to be perfect, even as I am perfect, he says that, he says that the divine seed, amen, is on the, on the inside of you, and because of the divine seed is on the inside of you as a priest, amen, you don't know, you no longer is not going to have a lifestyle of sin because you are a priest. Amen. Now, it's not to say that, amen, those things, are, amen, will come to challenge us. Let them come and challenge us. We take them all to what? To the great high priest. Amen? Because one of the things, amen, that I love about uh, uh, the priesthood in the Old Testament, amen, that when they offered the sin offering for the nation, they, they also had to offer a sin offering for their own sin as a priest. So you must, so you gotta, so you and I must start believing and really walking. It's not enough to believe because the devils, the Bible says the devils believe, but they tremble. But how many of us believe, but we don't even tremble? No fear. No fear. Walk through the valley shadow of death. Yeah. So that's why this holy priesthood must be resurrected, Pastor. Must be restored. Amen. Must become vibrant. Amen. In our life. And we're gonna and we're gonna see further on uh, why this is so important in our day and in our time. There are many types of priests, but there are two priests that are really manifested in the earth. Pagan priests and the priests of Jehovah, or the priests of God. Either you're a pagan priest in the house of God. Because see, there, there was priests that were pagans serving in the house of God. So, if you, so, so, uh, so, so let's look at some scriptures that, that support what we're talking about here. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. And then let's look at uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 9 through 10. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3. We're talking about the priesthood. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13, uh, 3, 13, and it says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire should try every man's work of what sort it is. Okay. So Paul declared that every man, right? Every man's work shall be what? Made manifest. <laughs> For the day shall declare, because it shall be revealed by what? By the fire, holy fire. That fire shall, and that fire shall try every man's work of what sort he is or she is. Okay. So let's look at 1 John chapter 3. Let's read that first John chapter 3. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. Uh -huh. He cannot sin because he is born of God. If this the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whosoever, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Okay, so John is declaring, amen, that, there's, that, that there are two types of children or priests. Or people that are manifest in the earth, right? The children of what? Light. And the children of darkness. Okay, so there's no there's no in between, there's none of that. The world and those that don't want to follow Christ want to try to confuse us that is that, that you can do both, but the Bible says you're either of light or you're either of darkness. Sometimes you have to bring the darkness to bring back to light. What was that now? Sometimes you have to go in the darkness to bring back the light, which is the truth. Yeah, the Bible says, God says, I will command what? Light to shine where? In the darkness. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay? So, so those, so those two types of priests that are there. Now, um, now, now all of these scriptures that I just shared is, is for a purpose and the purpose is we can see 
manifested in the earth are all around us when there's an absence of God. When there's an absence of what? Of a teaching priest. And an absence of what? Law, guidance. Okay, the land is filled with violence. And so let us look at something very interesting over in 2 Kings chapter 17. I don't know what time. Where, where am I at on time? So I, don't, I still don't tell you. I don't know what time I started. What time for Because it brought them back to God. 
Okay? And so this is what's happening here in 2 Kings in, 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 in chapter 17 that these things are happening. So they're taken away uh, to a, 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 a Babylon, Assyria. The king of Assyria has come. They have taken the children of Israel out of the land that is theirs. Okay? Re repossess them. Re uh, redirected them into another land, okay, into another place, okay, and then the king of Assyria brought his people to, in this, into their land, and to begin to, to do some things, but, uh, but this is what I want you to see in verse 26, because I skipped over quite a bit, but I want to I wanted to get to something here. In verse uh, 2 Kings chapter 17, I believe it's in verse 26. Okay, yeah. So, no, let's begin at verse, let's begin at verse uh, 22. Let's begin at verse 22. Okay? Are you with me? Okay? Now, it says, it says For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of what? Jeroboam, which he did, they departed not from them, okay, until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria until this day, okay? And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Kuda and from Ava and from how about, and from uh, Savarvim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. So the king brought these men and began to be placed in the cities where Israel once possess, okay? Uh, okay, are you with me? Verse 25. And, and so it was at the beginning of their dwelling that the Lord, that they feared not the Lord. Who, who feared not the Lord? These kings, these people that the king of Assyria had brought in, they did not fear uh, the Lord. Therefore, the Lord sent what? Lions among them which slew some of them. So God sent lions. Lions represents violence. And he sent these lions among them and slew some of these people. And why did God slew, why did God send lions among the people? Because they did not what? Fear God. <coughs> Israel, the priest, the true priest had been what? Taken out. Right? The king brings in his own pagan priest. Okay? And when there is an absence of what? The true God. An absence of a teaching priest. An absence of what? Direction. Then guess what? You're open for imminent what? Danger. And so what's really so strange about this, Pastor Rachel, is that it's one thing for Christians to fear God and to walk in the, in the way of God. Then for a people that do not know God, but God expects for them to at least inquire the God of the land. Amen. Yeah. Did, you, did you see that? I mean, that's, I think that's so powerful. He expects for these people that has moved into the land to at least inquire who is the God of the land, who, 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 <laughs> who, who oversees this land. But they did not. They did not. They, they feared not God. And so God sent for my. So what if the violence and the things that we're seeing in our streets and the things that we're seeing around the world, what if God is sending or allowing lions to come in and destroy people because there is no what? Teaching priests. There are 
people that do not fear God. There are people, amen, that 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 that, that is not even having the uh, the fear to even to consult who is the God of this land. Okay. Now this one, now this is going to bring out what I'm saying. Let's go. Let's go further. Okay. So look, look at this. So God sends in lions. Okay. So whenever there's absence of a true God, culture is imminent of what? All kinds of godliness and wickedness. Okay? And destruction. <coughs> okay? And so God allows and God sends that line. God sends these things in, amen, to what? To get the attention. Why? Let's look at verse 26. Wherefore, they spoke to the king of Assyria, those who escaped, from being killed by the lion, saying, The nations which thou hast what? Removed and placed in the city of Samaria know not what? The manner or the ways of God of the land. They don't know. And so guess what? So, so those who escaped came back to the king. Amen. The king, there are lions, amen, and that are, are, are killing us. Amen. And the reason why they're killing us, amen, why? Because we don't know the matter of the, of the matter or the ways of God in the land. This is what this guy said. Then he goes on to say, therefore, he has sent lies, and behold, they slain them because they know not the matter of the God of the land. Look at verse 27. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, carry thither one of what? Priests. Of the priests whom you brought from where? From there, one of those priests that was what? That was there in Samaria, over here in, in Assyria, because of what? Of their transgressions. Amen. The king, amen, one of the people said to the king, go and get one of those priests that we took out of the land. And what does it say? He says here, let, let, let's go back. Verse 27, carry them one of the priests whom you brought from this and let him go and dwell there and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. So the sinner has enough sense at this point to go to the, the king and says, go get one of the priests that was taken out of the land Bring that priest back so that priest can dwell here and begin to teach the people the ways of God. Amen. Okay? Amen. Why? Because we're being killed by what? Lions. <laughs> Amen? The land is vomiting up. The land is corrupted. Amen? So, amen. so, so, so how do we deal with this? Go get a priest. <laughs> Go get a teaching priest. Amen? For when you bring back the teacher and priest, he's going to bring what? Guidance. He's going to bring what? Order. He's going to bring what? Back what? The fear of God. This is how you serve. This is how, this is how you fear God. And they said, go bring that priest back. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in what? Bethel. Bethel means what? House of God. Okay? And taught them how they should what? Fear the Lord. So the priest comes back. Now, this is another thing. This is so powerful. Not all of the priests, and there were some guilty priests, but not all the priests were guilty of sin. Okay? But one of the things that I that I that, that really promotes for me to be humble and and, 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 and and be so merciful to God is this, is that oftentimes that when the nation sinned, even though they were not a part of it, they all was a part of it. Okay? The prophets would say, because we have sinned, 
God forgive not only those who have sinned, but the whole nation. And sometimes the whole nation will, will be taken away into what bondage? Because of the sin of those that cause the nation to sin and God to deal with their sin, right? So, so, so I'm saying this to say that he was this priest that perhaps was not guilty of moving Israel to sin, but yet this priest is in a place of bondage or in a place, amen, that they're being dictated from another king, and yet this priest easily could have said, like most of us probably that's could say, well, God, you forsake me, so why should I go back and teach them? I'm in prison here. You forsake me. You forsaken us. So why should I go back and teach them? You, you understand what I'm saying? Why should I go back? But they fear God. This priest feared God. And so he goes back and he begins to teach the people. <clears throat> Number two, 
Ava means ruin. Okay? Where there is no true teaching priest, no true God, no guidance, the land is going to be filled with ruin. Everything around will be filled with ruin. And, 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 and again, we have, and again, I just want you to just kind of these these words or these names are not just put there, just a book. We put that, I believe they're put there by the Holy Ghost to give us a kind of understanding of what happens when 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 there when there's an absence of God. So we so 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 you got crushing, you got ruin, and the word hamath means fortress. So the, so the enemy loves to build what? A fortress of demonic power and that in the land where there is no what? True teaching priest. And the and the last one was uh, uh, Sarafar, Seth, Sepharvim, which means it gives it gives the idea of two Sipras or two cities joined together, and and these two Sipras were idol uh, 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 worshippers of the sun. So when you have all this kind of mixture. In the land, it causes confusion. It causes crushing. It causes ruin. It causes, amen, a buildup of demonic forces. It causes all these things to take place, not only in the land, but in people's lives, only because why? The teaching priest is no longer there. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? The teaching priest is no longer there. Okay? So God, so so I believe in this hour and in this season, and, and this, as, as the man of God began to declare, um, um, as he began to pray in tongues, and the, and the, the young man back and began to declare about the season, I believe that this is the season, amen, that God wants to restore, amen, and resurrect the teaching priest. He wants to resurrect, amen, and bring back the vibrancy and the holiness, amen, and the honor and the respect, amen, of priesthood, amen, and he wants to do that, amen, uh, singular, that is going to affect us corporately, okay? It got to start singular, amen, with you and I, and then when you and I began to move out as a corporate body, amen, then we move what, as a corporate body of what, a priesthood, and you're holy, amen, and you're peculiar. Amen? And you are representatives, amen, of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Let me give you, let me give you one more thing. I promise this is, this is going to be, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, come on, just stand with me so I know that I got to quit. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to, I just want to give you, I just want to give you. As I, okay, as I said before, God is concerned about his name. Okay? Say it with me. God is, God is concerned, concerned about, about his, not my name, not my name but, his name, but his name. God is, God is concerned, concerned, concerned about, about not, my name, not my name, but his name. Okay? Now, let me, let me, let me give you let me read this to you. Out of Ezekiel chapter 36, this relates to priesthood. 
Ezekiel, 30, uh, Ezekiel 36. Verse 20. And this is what God says. Uh, Hebrews talks about that he is what? The great high priest, right? And our eyes will be set upon him, the great high priest. He is a great high priest. And we flow from him. We flow out of him as priests. Okay? I uh, give you share scriptures that we are chosen. We are that priesthood, okay? So he's a great high priest. Okay? And God is concerned about his priesthood, his name, and how you and I affect his name, not walking in the ways that Christ would have us to walk as true priests, okay? Now this is what he says in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 20. He says, says and, when they, and when they entered, in, it entered unto the heathen, whether they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, these are the people of the Lord, and I gone forth out of this land. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had pro profaned among the heathen where they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake which ye have profaned among the heathen where you went. And I will sanctify my great name. See, it's, it's not about your great name. It never have been trying to preserve your name. It's about his name, his greatness, okay? But God said, I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. Yes. God. How God's going to bring back the vibrancy and the restoration of priesthood is when he sanctified himself in your eyes. Your eyes. Your eyes. Your eyes. Your eyes, my eyes. Because when, because when you and I are not walking as priests, we profane this name. Right. We profane this name. So God says, I'm going to take pity out on what? Not your name. Not what church you go to, but what? On my name. Because my name is great. So God wants to sanctify himself in you and I. So tonight, I pray that we have given enough scripture that if you and I have not been walking in the way of a true priest, that tonight will be the night that God will sanctify himself in your eye. Amen. And if you have been walking as a true priest, thank you. Thank you for keeping the testimony of the Lord. Thank you for not profaning his name. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love for God. That you have kept the charge and you have kept the ways of God. Thank you. So tonight, I would like for us just to come to the altar and rededicate. God, sanctify me, consecrate me, stir within me. 
I want to be revived. God, forgive me when I did not walk in your ways. God, forgive me when I profane your name. God, forgive me. But I come this night to make a new covenant, to make a vow to you, O oh God, the great high priest, that I may begin to rewalk these steps. To begin to rewalk this place of holy priesthood.